Welcome to today's podcast. We're coming to you live from AASLD in San Francisco, California. Today is November 15th, and I'm honored to have with me today Dr. Petta from Palermo, Italy. And he's here today to discuss his paper entitled The Severity of Steatosis Influences Liver Stiffness Measurements in Patients with Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease. Welcome and congratulations on your paper. Thank you, Dr. Larson, for this kind invitation. So the genesis of this study goes back from the evidence that NAFLD is a growing cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. And notably, two recent studies on the natural history of patients with NAFLD clearly show that the severity of fibrosis is the main determinant of liver and extrapatic prognosis in these patients. So the real challenge is to identify NAFLD patients with severe liver fibrosis. Obviously, it is not possible to perform a liver biopsy in the entire NAFLD population, so, but we need of non-invasive tools. In this complex picture, the liver stiffness measurement by FibroScan is a well-validated instrumental tool, at least in patients with a chronic hepatitis C, while few studies are available in NAFLD. And the aim of our study is to assess whether uh, steatosis, the severity of liver steatosis assessed by both ultrasound and histology is able to affect liver stiffness values and in particular the accuracy of a transient elastography in the diagnosis of a severe fibrosis in this class of patients. Yeah, I agree. This is a major problem. You know, obesity is directly linked to the prevalence of fatty liver disease, particularly in the U.S. where we have significantly overweight patients and we're trying to do transient elastography, there are certain issues that come up, subcutaneous fat, and also the idea that maybe the fat inside the hepatocytes may have some influence on the kilopascal score. So tell us how you uh, set up your study and how you evaluated that. So in our study, we included a population of about 300 patients with biopsy proven NAFLD, even if we rule out about 50 patients because we used the hand probe of fiber scan and the liver stiffness measurement was not reliable. In, 20, in 253 patients or so with the ultrasonography, with liver biopsy, and with the fiber scan, we assessed the impact of steatosis on fiber scan. So first, we showed that the steatosis was significantly associated with higher liver stiffness values. This was the first time uh, this issue was documented, was proved. So according to this issue, we stratified our populations in those with advanced fibrosis and those without advanced fibrosis. We noted that in patients without advanced fibrosis, those with severe steatosis evaluated by both ultrasound or histology had significantly higher liver stiffness values compared to those without severe steatosis. So patients with stage three and stage four fibrosis that had steatosis had higher false positive kilopascal scores? No, this is the contrary. So patients without advanced fibrosis, so with F0 to F2 fibrosis had higher liver stiffness in presence of severe steatosis. Ah, I see. So the lower the fibrosis stage, those are the ones that had a false positive, a false elevation in their kilopascal score. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, to further strengthen our results, we further certified our patients other than for fibrosis, also for presence or absence of ballooning lobular inflammation. And again, in almost all the subgroups we tested, we found higher liver stiffness values in those with severe liver steatosis. So from a clinical point of view, we calculated the best threshold of stiffness to diagnose advanced fibrosis. This threshold was about 8.4 kilopascal, similar to that reported in other studies. And at this threshold, we found a rate of a false positive results of about 22%. But notably, when stratifying the populations according to presence or absence of severe steatosis, both by ultrasound or by histology, we found that the rate of a false positive results was about 30% in those with severe steatosis and 15% in those without. So 35% in severe steatosis, false positive, 15% in those without severe steatosis, false positive rate. Yeah, wow, that's significant. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, when we consider 
patients with the severe steatosis only, and we recalculated a threshold in this population alone, we showed that the best threshold is a higher threshold by about 10 kilopascal. And when using this higher threshold, the rate of false positive results down to about 15% again. So you would, what are your suggestions then? moving forward. So from a clinical point of view, I think that overall liver stiffness measurement by Fibroscan is good for the evaluation of fibrosis in patients with NAFLD. However, when we have a patient with high liver stiffness value and with severe steatosis ultrasound, we have to consider that we have a high probability to overestimate the presence of severe fibrosis in this patient. So I know that ultrasound is poor for the evaluation of steatosis and is not able to give a quantitative estimation of steatosis. I right. think, however, that we have to use in the next future non-invasive tools that can allow to quantitatively estimate the steatosis. So I think, for example, to control the attenuation parameter, a new parameter obtained with a different software in the same machine, the Fibroscan. You're talking about the CAP, yeah, the controlled perfect. attenuation yeah, parameter. Yeah, yeah perfect. Okay. So I think that we should try to adjust liver stiffness values by CAP. In this manner, I think, but we have to try to demonstrate it, we think that in this manner we can improve the diagnostic performance of liver stiffness for diagnosis of fibrosis in patients with So we need you to do another study, is what you're We saying. are working on it. Yes, yeah. so we're going to have to do CAP and FibroScan, yeah. kilopascal, and maybe make an adjustment factor for the degree of fat by CAP. Perfect. And maybe we get some different cutoffs. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And what, just a question, what do you think the... Uh, the mechanism of severe steatosis and hepatocytes, how is that giving us a false positive elevation in the kilopascal? Yeah, I can suspect that the presence of fat droplets within the hepatocytes can change the liver architecture, so it can also change the propagation time of the vibratory wave. I think this could be an explanation, even if I don't have all the data. Super. Well, I'd like to thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I'd like to thank Dr. Pettit, for joining us today. We sure hope you pay attention to our next one that's coming soon. Thank you.